Here we go. Hello, Hello. everyone out there. How are you? Welcome to Hot Talks uh, with my dear friend, Caitlin, and myself, Jamee. Um, I am an Akashic Records librarian. I'm able to tap into the Akashic Record and receive information, help clear energy, uh, and uh, anything that really you want to uh, work on in your life and and move forward on your path uh, with joy and grace and all that good stuff. And Caitlin, um, why don't you tell us about yourself, your amazing, beautiful self? <laughs> Well, I'm an intuitive realm guide. I'm here to help people raise their vibration in order to thrive here in this reality. I do that through uh, shamanic astrology uh, and I work with biogeometry and um, ceremonies with the moon cycles, you know, all the things. So, yeah, and yeah. you're really good because you've helped me. My big brain. <laughs> so, okay. And today <laughs> this is our, you know, another one of our hot talks. Um, we were calling it uh, menopause in the apocalypse, um, but that, uh, you know, sounds a little dramatic. So we're, we've changed it to hot talks. It might change <laughs> later. We, you know, we just are having fun <clears throat> and hopefully bringing um, good knowledge and, and just, uh, opening your mind to, you know, expand into other realms and dimensions and, you know, and kind of understand what we're doing here. So we just have these conversations to um, try to figure it out. And today we'll be talking about the reality or the non-reality that I've been saying lately. Um, and it's, I like, uh, it's going to be the three P's, persuasion, perception, and perspective perspective and then we're gonna branch off from there um and so yeah we'll start with the persuasion of this reality and i love your you know we were talking so and i love your take on it so what is that what is the persuasion of this reality that we're dealing with well yeah that's interesting i mean part of what i have been doing for years is zooming out on this reality and looking at events and different things that have occurred from this kind of bird's eye view way above and i can you know i'm a libra i can take in all kinds of information without mm -hmm. um taking a side mm -hmm. um, so that's part of the gift of libra and and like being able to view situations and yeah, the things scales, the judgment is the other side but you know really we're supposed to take in all the information and then kind of make a decision mm -hmm. and through you know different major events sorry that was a hawk <laughs> like hawks the birds, and i'm like the hawk, hawk is medicine. Like, hawk medicine like and that doesn't happen every day and it's just it was like screaming I I you heard that so that was powerful because i did hear it sorry you didn't oh shoot it might come no. up on the video though because they the bird sounds usually do so you will um because you found a hawk awesome. feather. so anyways it's coming in sorry to interrupt <laughs> Yeah, so uh, there's those, all these different ways where we have been persuaded and, it, you know, it begins, you know, for us, we're in our 50s, or you're 50, I'm 54, you know, from birth on where we are given information, we're giving uh, history that we're supposed to take in. And it really is, is could be part of the picture, but there's actually so much more history within uh, that we're not told. So uh, I'm not denying the standardized history necessarily, but there are all this, these other events that have happened that we, that have been forgotten. Yeah. So what's kind of cool is I think through the pandemic, a lot of uh, people and even before that they have been going down the rabbit hole of architecture you know our ancient monoliths and megaliths and um, structures and finding out oh wow they've actually been here a lot longer than the historical narrative says they're always kind of taken over mm -hmm. so there's ways that we've been persuaded with history right. in a formula 
that um, is very limiting because it doesn't really, I don't know, I, I don't feel empowered by history, the standardized history. Mm -hmm. And I feel like um, learning about all these different uh, other things that went on is actually, it shows me that this place is a lot older, especially United States is a lot older. There's a lot more history to it. Um, pre also Native Americans, there were people here before that. Mm -hmm. And there's this amazing history of giants yeah. and giant things, which is what they call the dinosaur. And also got to really note that our timelines are completely messed with. Right. So we've been given these millions and millions of years kind of story. And it really, they really don't know. It's yes. not new. Right. They really can't date these things. They're guessing and they're, or, or they've come up with a formula and it fits. It's called uniformitarianism. <laughs> it's like the longest word. That's yeah. the kind of history we have. So it follows this this timeline, you know, and very carefully, you know, mm -hmm. this happened and that happened then millions of years, then other things happened. And really what the historical narrative shows through um, different like old books, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's people that go down those rabbit holes of the old books and read everything and then create timelines and chronologies and they really show a lot of um just outright you know things that are amazing that were never talked about again because oh. since 1902 things have were kind of taken over and like uh the past information before that was kind of shut down mm -hmm. so we didn't really have like the full picture and then our timelines are off so it's really confusing yeah. um to try to sort out uh, but there mm -hmm. are people who like just look at old newspaper articles from the 1800s mm -hmm. and there's so much that has been uncovered and then it's forgotten about so yeah. but luckily we still have some of these you know archival like information you know it's not popular at all but it is something, and the, the intention really, they had no intention of, they didn't really have a, a motive, you know, necessarily back then. It was kind of like, no, they just were digging a well and then found a whole underground city, yeah. you know, 200 feet down or whatever. So it's like, there's a lot of information and what this information, it can overwhelm you, but it also helps to shift your perspective. Mm -hmm. you know yeah beyond this standardized way yeah. and it you know it is mind-blowing and it be really I I resisted a lot of it I remember used to hear about the cosmology and I'd be like oh right all right you know and then you start looking at it and you're like oh wait a minute <laughs> the ancient the way the ancients saw the cosmology yeah. actually has some keys to you know, some really important things. And why would they say, you know, why yeah. would they manipulate us that way? You know, right. they did it because that's what they really thought through the tuning in. And they were in tune with yeah. the earth. As that is, you know, was a big part of the connection. Yeah. You know, and also just to understand that all of us come from tribal culture. Mm -hmm. So really have to get in tune with the roots of everybody has a tribal mm -hmm. background you know an indigenous background yeah so it's kind of finding the place where you are from and and looking at the different um traditions mm -hmm. and you find like some of them are really common you know like the scottish and the native americans the old Scottish tr tribes, you know, back in the Druid days, they were, they were fully into the groves and the oaks oh. and they were super into the water. It was all about the water and, you know, everything was alive and uh, they yeah. had a really strong connection with salmon too. 
though. There was like a really, there's like these really common themes. They knew that everything because, was consciousness. Yeah. And how to connect. Yeah, when they were connected yeah, they to were. the earth. <laughs> yep. The earth energy. Yeah. You know, so. And everything on her. That's kind of, yeah. So that's like part of going down these rabbit holes and learning about this stuff is like, whoa, it really shifts the way uh, you can see the world. Yeah. And so you've been exploring one of those, one of those channels too. Yeah. Yeah. I've been listening to several, right. you know, and it's just amazing because there's so many people uncovering so many people going down rabbit holes and sharing what they've found, you know, and, and questioning like things that, you know, we've been told that, oh, this is 300 million billion years old. And, and they're like, really? How it's like was made with more of a modern tool. You know, I, for, it was like this big call. Right. Look, you know, and so there's things that just don't add up photographs of buildings that were supposedly made, you know, a million years ago, or, you know, I'm over exaggerating, but they're, but they're pointing out like, that's impossible because the way that this um, structure is um, formed or chiseled, um, that's with certain tools that pr did not exist that far back. Um, and so there's just, there's a lot of debunking. And so that's where it's like, huh, well, who, manipulated that so now we're getting into like that the the persuasion who wanted to persuade us to think differently or or and and confuse us um of what this non-reality was you know way far back because i now my aquarian likes to question everything so i'm like is that real you know like like you said all the history books what is your virgo darling my, my Virgo. We got a lot of questions. My Virgo is like, you better get things right. So before you even speak, <laughs> and then you might not be. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just uh, discovering so much, but um, like, you know, just we've been lied to and, and there's proof on, um, you know, these discoveries and it's just, it's fascinating um just like there's been like um you know like in the hieroglyphs like of e Egypt this is one fascinating thing to me they have like a a watch on like what is that they have something that looks like a like a watch that we wear and 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 so there i think we had technology i we had more technology than what we've been told i mean there's a helicopter there's a boat there's all kinds of like with a there's like a boat with a motor and a helicopter yeah. in one of the hieroglyphs. And, and they tried to cover it up and there was an earthquake and it re and it revealed it. Uh, so they left they left it there. But interesting. yeah, there's uh, all kinds of yeah. evidence of ancient technology. Yes. Um, that's definitely common. And all this, you know, amazing architecture, these huge structures that were i mean first of all there's all this evidence of having um resets right. so there are these that's right tragedies that happen mm -hmm. through and they and it's you know some people have documented it every 138 years there's a there's a, some kind of weird event that it may not affect the whole realm, but it affects part of it. And then there's mass migrations and water moves. And mm -hmm. so things happen really quickly. And there's all this evidence of um, also of, uh, fossils made in like flash fossils, you yeah. know, flash, I forget what they call yeah, it. Those are the videos too uh, I've been watching. Yeah. The flat, like giant yeah. flash fossil, like a huge... Right dragon that is like formed into the earth you know and or in the book right, it's like yeah yeah and then the ancient trees right there's a, this evidence yeah. of like a lot of our mountains are are ancient trees yeah are you know that yeah. were petrified in a some kind of you know flash event that happened really quickly kind of so it's really interesting because there is evidence of that, but 
the nature of this realm, the way they persuade us is that there's always doom around the corner. Right. You know, they're always gearing up for another cycle of doom. And I feel like it's, it's really, you know, there's times where it's more ramped up. Like we can use the last eclipse cycle and how even the regular news was into the eclipse, you know? Right. So it's like they're using astrology to seed the field. They're using yeah. this information to be like, Oh, be afraid, go out and buy shit and prepare and yet, you know, that, I mean, at some point there is going to be a cataclysmic event, but we're always kind of kept on our toes to be like, no, you know, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I, I feel this every, it's this underlying constant buildup and release and buildup and release. Yeah. So we don't know, you know, so we don't know what, what's up or down and like, yeah, and that you know, we could be like, oh, well, I'm not paying my bills because it's going to be a cataclysm or, you know, <laughs> it's just like, yeah. it's just weird. It's just weird. So well, it's to keep us, the persuasion is to keep us in fear and in confusion. And so yes, but I feel like we are, we're more not trusting than, ourselves and not trusting ourselves. Exactly. That our inner power and intuition, Yeah, but I feel yeah. like we're we're on to them now. There's a lot of us that are on to them. And that's why, and I just, and thankfully, thank to the, to this technology, we can, um, share, uh, discoveries of like, Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I don't think it is. This didn't happen. What they told us in the, you know, in the school's history books and, and all of that. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really cool. Yeah. The, the ancient trees are fascinating me. So I'm so stoked. You sent that to me. Cause now I'm looking around going, Oh my God, you know, that's there. Everything is and it. You look and once it's pointed out to you, you're like, Holy crap, it is a tree. It's just the way that it's, yeah. you know, formed and the ancient, these biblical trees were a different, um, makeup. So they're, so they, they are our crystals. Um, yeah. And the yes. set is Amber. Like it's because they were, um, what is silicon? That? Thank you. Silicone. Yeah. Silicone trees. Opposed they were to cedars and cedars. They were, yeah. Okay. Yep. The cedar trees. silicone trees they were like giant. Yeah. Huge. So like devil's yeah. mountain is a tree. Like now it's so obvious, like, cause it, it, and it's, and all these trees got decimated. Like, it's just so sad. Cause there's like these huge, what eight mile, you know, tree stumps, um, that got, and, and I like what you like right? So then that part of that, like, well, why? And you said, because the giants, because there were giants here, um, they cut them down so they wouldn't be able. And that, that got me thinking like, oh, the, uh, what the giant and the beanstalk. So we've been told. Jack and the beanstalk. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah Jack no, it's in our mythology. Oh. There's, like it's yeah. all there. I mean, there's a lot it. like what's <laughs> jack and the beanstalk yeah. like that's like oh okay and then he has to cut down this huge ginormous that goes all the way up to the heavens so the giant can't come down so like because didn't you say that the giants couldn't they cut him down so the giants couldn't escape that's yes and that's a, a biblical story i mean that guy okay. uh his channel is hangman one one two eight Good, he yeah. relates everything to the original, you know, understanding of the Bible as this code book, you know, that's actually telling us about the cosmology and mm. how, so, you know, despite what you may think about the Bible or religion or whatever, but that's part of his focus. Yeah. So when you look at these channels, everybody has got a different, you know, um, thing that they're you know on so you got to kind of open your mind to to like okay well that could be true and that could be true and multiple things could be true right um yeah that was the understanding and the understanding too was that the these giant trees created like a vapor canopy that so things grew to large sizes because it was all under this canopy uh mm -hmm. with ambient light and so things grew to, you know, enormous sizes. And this could have been caused by a cataclysmic event that created also so much volcanism and so much 
uh, right. kind of volcanic ash in the air. So there's like different understandings of how that happened, yeah. how, why we had giant things. So, you know, we, and who knows, you know, I mean, there's just different documents and different people exploring the thoughts. But one thing we know is we had giant skeletons. They were being uncovered all the time. Yeah. So large fibers, large bones, woolly mammoths, you know. I mean, there's a guy, uh, Stellium 7, who has lives next to this mountain that looks like a woolly mammoth, like the yeah. total shape of an elephant. Yeah. So part of this whole understanding is our our Earth is actually biology that's gone that's you know been petrified or you know so so part of that is like creatures giant creatures i mean i live along a coastline that has like giant looking elephant kind of like rocks with these arches and yeah. it's very hollow underneath to all the so there's all these caves and uh, right off the coast and it's it's bizarre i mean i also live an hour from this beach called bowling ball beach where there's giant orbs Whoa. on the beach and it's like well, how did that happen yeah you know so there's a lot of anomalies here yeah and whether i mean who knows what really happened mm. we weren't there but just to expand your mind beyond yeah the traditional history is a liberation because yeah when we can start to see, and this is where we get into perception, you start to expand your mind, you can actually start to see things that you couldn't see before. Yeah. You know, there's different accounts in these historical records that are like, you know, in Ohio, a thousand people saw a city floating above uh, in the air and they, and they saw this whole other city, but yeah. some people didn't see it were yeah. there. So it's like when yeah. you start to be able to expand your mind, you're able to perceive beyond the, you know, the, whatever your what, what, persuasion. What reality, because we're, we're, now we're getting into the quantum, right? The different reality vibrational spaces. There's yeah. thousands and thousands. So it's just the perception and frequency that we tap into or move into then that's where that city is and then others aren't in that frequency um so then that's yeah. into that yeah which is so yeah which gets into the dimensions that are here right, right. Mm -hmm. that we have and why some people can see you know auras around people or yeah energies you know um entities energies i definitely now that i understand um with this history debunking and then yeah. my perception and then studying vibrational physics and like vibration mm -hmm. it's like i now understand so much more about the energetic field and people's bodies and how we move in the space and what we're bringing into the what what our energy is and how like uh, all the different f factors that are around yeah. from the past, you know, you start to see all this stuff and you're like, Whoa, I could, it was all there before, but I okay. wasn't tapped into it. So yeah. this kind of opening your, your mind to these other possibilities, regardless mm -hmm. of what is the truth. And this is the thing with a lot of these channels, they, you know, get really into what the truth is. And it's like, that's really not the point. Right. The point is to be open to these different understandings. Right. So we can expand our um, perception. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, yeah. 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 That's why it's like, always stay because. open. Yeah. When I, it's cause it's all our So It's like, we can resonate with some, like something that, you know, someone's saying on, you know, one of these other channels and go, oh yeah, that feels right. Um, but that's just to me, one timeline, one vibrational space, like we're talking about. Um, but it's not to take for granted or that is it because, and then that you, 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 you close off, you put yourself in a box for 
the expansion. And that's what I feel like we're here is to keep expanding and keep um, figuring this stuff out. That's the excite. That's like really exciting to me is like all the information. Right. That, that, that yeah, I'm discovering. That reality. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, and then that we can actually control our reality through really resonating with like programming it that I, cause I, I, I did a little experiment the other day and I was, oh my God, I like tripped out. I was like, no way. Cause I was aligning with and just believing it. Cause I was like, of course this is going to happen. So I was in the car and I was in a, on the passenger side and I was just, you know, milling over ideas and the magic here. And so I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to create a, dark blue SUV in the net, you know, like it's just going to appear, you know, and I, and so, and it did, it appeared, it was parked in a parking lot that we drove by just alone, no other cars, this dark blue, like Cadillac S giant SUV. I was like, no way. Okay. I'm going to see like a, I'm going to see a, a white, like four door sedan. I know those are kind of common, but <clears throat> excuse me, but it appeared. And then I was like, okay, gold minivan, boom, gold minivan. I was like, whoa, this is trippy. So I was like creating, or did I tap into what was already going to be there? Or was I really programming I know. my yeah. reality? It was really cool. Well, I mean, this is where we get into, <laughs> you know, the ancient understanding of this reality is that we live in a reflective reality mm -hmm. and, you know, it really is. It's like we, our thoughts are really creating our beliefs, our thoughts, our actions are all creating everything around us. So this is the thing when you start tuning into, you know, the idea that our landscape is ancient trees, you know, that changes the reality. And then all these other things start coming towards you. It's like when I got into understanding the true meaning behind sacred geometry, then all these like different sacred geometrical oh. um shapes came to me and why they're used and then some have been just taken over and so we can't use them anymore which is really sad because they were actually super powerful yeah. and, but they were taken over and inverted right. so i even think about it came to me like about the pentag the pentagon the pentagon is like oh. a pentagram so yeah. and the pentagram protects your with all the angles it makes in the stars, because stars are really um, an amazing shape to work with because of all the angles, it is protects your emotional energy, protects you from psychic attack. Yeah, how's that? Yeah. So it's like you know, everything is understood, also by the you know so-called controllers. Yeah, and you know, part of the agenda of persuading us of is to keep us in these little boxes, you know, and keep us in this three dimensional realm, which actually yeah. goes way beyond, you know? And yeah. that's what I love about um, really exploring this stuff, but you know, you don't want to get too carried away because you also have to deal with 3d reality as well. So it's like having a balance of, of all that. Yes. But I think that's, the power of like also doing psychedelics and things like that because it actually suppresses the left side of your hem hemisphere so you could actually see all the different layers of energies that are here so you know when you once you have that experience it's not to keep having it necessarily with with the psychedelics but just to open you up to that other reality now you don't have to do it that way but i did it that way and it, and it like now I can, like I had a moment yesterday at the beach where I was just so tapped in and I was getting all this information and I was playing my drum and I really resonated with the energies. And then I had this moment where everything went blurry, like in psychedelics where things get really um, yeah, yeah. fuzzy. Yeah. And I was like looking at the cliffs and I was like, Oh, Oh, I'm having this moment, you know, and it's, yeah. I wasn't on anything. And it was just like, it was just the resonance. Yeah. I was tapping into other dimensional ah. realities. Well, in you're this. tapping into yeah. 
the things that we have been perceiving solid really aren't solid and it's all yeah, they are solid the yeah that's frequency just, and vibration yeah. so you're you tapped into that perception of like oh yeah. you know can I even grab this cup <laughs> you know because yeah it's like it's not really but if I if I could and that's like mastering that vibration you know being in that frequency to understand that nothing that everything is vibration and isn't solid yeah <laughs> and it doesn't happen all the time which is good because we also need to you know do functional things that like you know so it's good yeah if we can go in and out of it you know and control yeah. that perception yeah no you know, so and really connecting yeah. to the earth is like there's so much magic if you just There's just so tune in. Much, yeah. So like, yeah. So much, just like you, like we were talking about earlier, finding the the hawk feathers. Those like whatever you know, it's like that's magic to me when the when it's like oh feathers, like because they're so. Well, and it was right after right after I did a video, and I'm always like resistant doing videos because you know the Virgo rising. It's like it's not perfect. I don't like that. You said that. I don't like it, you know, cause I'll just be like blah, 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 in the forest. I have to make a video. I love, on my mind. I love and that. Then, yeah. And I'm like, why even post that? That's so stupid. Like just, you know, everybody's <laughs> doing their, you know, I just pretty much talking myself out of it, but then took two steps. It was like this hawk feather. And I was like, first of all, I live around a lot of trees. So the hawks are not necessarily, yeah all over the place around here I was, wow. I've definitely lived in other places where I've got found way more feathers and then you have the crows magic. too right so they keep the hawks away so when you ravens have yeah the ravens Ro the ravens are very dominating the yeah. of this area but you were here and there was a hawk magic with the snake that you had yeah. um right that outside was my window so well that's why there's that's had, like we are like that's you know, my guides, higher self, my team, whatever, they know that it's like, that fills me up and keeps me focused on my path is to show me a yeah. hawk. <laughs> and yours, yeah, yeah, it was exactly. like at your house, you're like, there's never, no, there's, the hawks don't come around there. I'm like, no, I got it on video. Thank God. And there, it's I know you did. your branch with a snake in its tail. Yeah. I was like, I definitely was on a different timeline. That's <laughs> a different vibrational space. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. Well, and you just had done a really big ceremony. We did a big yeah, ceremony. Yeah. So like yeah. it's really ceremonies are amazing because it pulls us out of our routines and yeah. it can link up our energy fields and strengthen things and things really shift. And they're subtle. It's like you you think, oh, nothing really happened. And then you're like, whoa, actually some major shifts happened. Yeah. So it's really interesting when you um break your patterns and do stuff like that. You know, that was a big pattern break for you coming here so and doing yes. that. It was huge. Yeah, it was so yeah. powerful because it felt, I mean, this is what our ancestors did. This is what our, our lineage and like what you were saying earlier, the tribal, our tribal DNA or our ancient DNA that we have because we're here today because of our ancestors that were Druids or Native American and they did ceremony. And that's connecting with the consciousness on planet earth here. And that's part of this yeah. um, persuasion too, is to cut us off from that um, is this, the electronics. We all have what those watches, we have our iPhones, we have these computers, we're doing zoom. And I'm, I'm like really finding like, I have to work extra hard to stay connected you know, like through the ceremonies, going out in nature, connecting with my higher self. It's not as easy as it used to be before all these electronics came in. And that to me is persuasion, which with our free will or whatever you want to call it, we have to be really diligent on what we're choosing in our life because we have choice. Um, and I know I want to stay connected to the beautiful consciousness here on the planet. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, part of that gets into the persuasion that, you know, only certain cultures can hold the connection to the elements. Mm -hmm. So you really have to understand that we all have a connection to the elements right. and we all need to bring the elements into our consciousness. 
-hmm. because it is they are so powerful they are the nature spirits they are the spirits of the land and air water earth fire these are the elements inside of us so it's like but but our history says only certain cultures have that connection right so and yeah. i've been told this since the 90s like since i can remember you know it's i've just like and i'm i'm pretty much done with that everyone has this authority I do. Everyone has this connection because what ends up happening is we don't build the connections we need mm -hmm. and we're kind of not tethered to the earth and it, and it, and it, and it get, takes us off the hook. Oh no, we're not responsible for the tending the land or, you know, right. having the alignment with the energies. It's like we outsource that to other cultures and really it's everybody's responsibility yeah. Too. yeah to steward the land yeah and as midlife women as we you know get older we need to really build that connection yeah. and steward the land it's super important it to you know, because we're heading back towards the land yeah. <laughs> to being part of the land so yeah. it's like really a huge part of our, um, you know, to use the Hawaiian word, kuleana, our responsibility. Right. You know, it is. Yeah. It's, and this is, you know, what we both learned living in Hawaii, right? Huh. Yeah. Really, I learned how to garden from amazing, you know, uh, gardener friends and, and I had gardens and, but I was so busy in the 3D working as a single mom. Like I didn't have time, you know, and now, um, here not in Kauai anymore in california um kind of still in that false 3d uh like right when i first moved back but now i've really changed my perspective from the persuasion you know or perce per perception from the persuasion and truly creating what you know i'm really grasping what i've been studying you know around creating your own reality through um, connecting and clearing and understanding what we're in and to truly, you know, make other things more like the bringing in joy and, um, trusting my intuition and aligning with the frequencies that I really want in my life and not just doing the, you know, the, um, kind of just in a daze of what the 3d can do to all of us. Um, and it feels amazing to be creating what I want yeah. and to feel joy and, um, and participating and being able to have the time to my point was to have the time to do a garden and, um, uh, and work with the land. Cause I have a garden now. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then okay. Hawaiian culture, you know, it's all about the land. It is. And, you know, I learned a lot living there and practicing the hula yeah. And I was, I know I'm very privileged that I was able to do that, but it really reminded me of, you know, some very core understandings, which was, you know, you always, the land is alive. And yeah. This is the other thing about yeah. this cosmology and uh, the history, the persuasive history we have. It really, mm -hmm. um, the really, if you look to a lot of indigenous cultures that are still practicing their traditions, the land was a living being. Yeah. So it's, you know, yeah. the Turtle Island, literally, when you start to see some of this, uh, these explorations of the fossils and things, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, well, we are living on biology, you yeah. know, that is biology of the past so yeah. it is really fascinating um it is and yeah it's the I, shifts on earth too so like <clears throat> that's what i've been kind of listening to other people when they they've done their you know um research and everything with the shifts of on earth of like where there wasn't water you know where there's you know a big mass ocean but there actually wasn't ocean you know, however long ago, but, and then how about the places that we're not supposed to go? What's beyond on this planet, like a beyond the ice walls. So I've, I just watched someone 
really deep dive into that and like uh uh that uh discover bird you know beyond the ice wall there was like greenery and so there's just so much oh, that yeah we don't know but that we're discovering and that's just uh, um really cool to me the ice walls oh and then um i was listening to someone else uh i think my friend chris onatra and symphony of realities they they talked about uh they were, they were talking about Atlantis, which is, yeah, his show, his channel's really good. Um, but they were talking about the Grand Canyon and you're only able to see a little section of it. And then the rest is off right. limits. Like what's in the Grand Canyon that, and who are, who's well, and this, this tell us? gets to back to off old, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this gets back to old archives of newspapers people discovered in the Grand Canyon, like this type of Egyptian hieroglyphs and sculptures and all kinds of mummies, all kinds of stuff was found there. And there's other people that have done research that say that some of these places are old mines. They yeah. have been mined. That's what the Grand Canyon is, like old trees right. that have, were petrified and then they turned to precious gems gold or you know, gold and silver and then they become oh. mines and then they're abandoned and become these sacred sites so yeah Basically. the grand canyon is yeah That's and then also what who's involved in this is one of these because yeah. there's these you know elite families we we can we can all you know people don't want to admit oh there's the conspiracies la 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 but oh. there's elite families that run this that you know, the Rockefellers, there's, yeah. you know, four or five elite, you know, maybe more elite families. I don't want to come into resonance with that information. So I just kind of just know it's out there, but, you know, yeah. and they, Carnegie's, you know, they created libraries, the last reset, 1902, they created libraries, Rockefeller medicine came in, demonizing yeah. homeopathy, which was major Herbology, uh, way of health care yeah <clears throat> the demon yeah, so and, and the smithsonian the smithsonian was another yeah. they are seen in every time there is some major discovery in the 1800s in these newspapers mm -hmm. smithsonian comes in shuts it down yeah and you never hear about it yeah over and over yeah so these these major you know, players, yeah. and you can look at it also as the big corporations, because a lot of these, uh, these elite families fund these big or started these big corporations. So it's just like, again, it gets back into this, this controlling, wanting to control narratives, you know, that yeah. doesn't fit the narrative. So we're going to come in and just kind of take over and shut this whole site down. And you yeah. just can't see that. Yeah. And that's, if it happened in one place, it'd be one thing, but it's over and over and over. In the United States, you mm -hmm. know, we have this story of Columbus coming over and there's natives here. Well, guess what? There was, when I was um, starting to do um, this reciprocity with, my birthplace, which is in Ohio, I started looking at, okay, well, what are kind of sacred sites is around there? Well, actually there's all these mounds and there's a serpent mound and there's, oh. and then, but, but it's <laughs> like, you start to look it up and it's like, you know, I couldn't really, I didn't really go that far. And this was years ago. This is probably like oh. 10 years ago. And I was like, oh, how interesting these mounds were found, but there's really not much information about it. Like yeah. just doing a light search on it. And Native Americans were like, well, we didn't know who these people were, you know, we just kind of, because this is the whole thing with civilizations. They, they get buried and they move on top, you know, and then maybe when there's digging, they find, oh, there's actually this whole other civilization underneath, like 200 feet down. So there's this there's this thing that's constantly happening things are buried covered and then civilizations come and take over so the united states is actually has this whole other history it's it's a lot older and there's other cultures that were here and then a lot of ancient books point to you know there were mariners all over every you know they were sailing all over the place 
And there were this huge cultures, Mariner race. A lot of our language comes from the yeah. Mariner, you know, style, the currents and banks. And, you know, there's all kinds of uh, influences of that. So, you know, the idea that Christopher Columbus sailed over and it was this great thing. It's like, they no, they've been sailing. All cultures have been all over the place. And there were, and there's evidence in this, a lot of this, uh, 1800 newspapers from the 1800s that they were finding all these phenotypes, all these different cultures coexisting in wow. the United States. Yeah. So that's fascinating. That's right? fascinating. Yes. And the mounds were found all over the place. And in the mounds are these incredible uh, copper, beautiful, like, oh. you know, regalia and mummies and giant bones yeah you know funny. so it's just just yeah it's just like really fascinating yeah uh information yeah that's, that's forgotten to me that's what i want to focus on and that's what we can that's where yeah it's like our perception but then perspective so what is it that you want what's going to bring you joy what we were talking about earlier joy and happiness and like this kind of stuff it's like my curiosity yeah. my, and then it switch and it does change my perspective of, you know, um, trying to figure out what, you know, is going on here. <laughs> yeah. It, just yeah. how you feel about yourself too. It's like, yeah. I don't know. I just, I just, it changed the way I feel about myself and it actually, uh, allowed me to like be more confident in, you know, my culture's history too. It's like, oh yeah, we've had this really strong connection and been all over the place. And, you know, that it's not just like this timeline, you know, where we evolved from monkeys. Um, you know, if we slime monkeys, why are there still monkeys? Okay. <laughs> from a slime. lot of people ask this question. <laughs> like, yeah, from slime. <laughs> bleh, bleh. You know, however yeah. they like no I don't. that never made sense to me i don't know actually we came from really high technology where we don't even understand it That's you know funny. we don't even understand how how it was used but it seems and you know they understood the ley lines and energy lines and we talk about this that, some people are really focused on those the energetic lines on the map that yes. used to be on the map <clears throat> the, the ley lines on yeah the map. The, right that's what that that's yeah. what really fills me up because our we're finding how powerful our consciousness is you know and can connecting with these ley lines and and that's what you know what creating what we want in this whatever reality non-reality we're in um but that's what you were saying like the the ley lines and then there was power places right that right power spots power spots that our ancestors that are you know way old you know beings that were here knew where the power spots with the ley lines where you could recharge and you know either recharge your body and yes yeah, that's yeah ceremony and then it got destroyed so, right the ley lines got well or taken over you know where you know yeah. where one of our power spots is here in california well, I think in Davenport where I was born, because I've that was my message well, I got from um it's close. I mean, there is one here and it's Bohemian Grove. Oh, okay. Interesting. But that's near us. That's right? really near it's here. Near, yeah, yeah. It it is the whole entire one for the West Coast. There's this one power spot. Oh, okay. That, so yeah. So it's very that's, interesting. That is interesting. Um yeah. Okay. And that's where, that's where the, you know, we won't get into that, but the inversion and taking, yeah. And, and them getting taken over by yeah the asshole dark, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, but we can create power spots. That's what's really yes. cool also, yeah. because this is why I learned in biogeometry. You can actually map energetic lines. They're different. Uh, different directional lines north south east west there's also different lines going diagonal mm -hmm. and um, it can create toxicity it can create a high higher vibration you can work on your land and actually okay. amplify the the energy centers there yeah using a number quantity you know 
So I have some spots I've mapped from a Google map and then I find the power spot on the physical okay. earth and then I amplify them with 16 of something. Mm. I'll put like 16 pine cones on the power spot and it oh. amplifies it. So there's just like different ways we can like work with the energies also. And we're not totally. like doomed to, you know, be. Oh, that's um, my favorite thing is to work with. Yeah. The, the yeah. Ley lines and land. You know, and raise the vibration land. on. Yeah. But it's yeah. like to understand, first of all, that we live in this energetic grid, you know, that yeah. and then it was more understood back then. They, they would even put it on the map, you know, that yeah. it, there were these power centers. Yeah. You know, that's what the Great Pyramid is all about. You know, it was its intersection of all these lines. Yeah. And it was actually the prime meridian at some point where it was the zero point, right? For the earth. And, but they moved it, they changed it. So mm -hmm. they got together. And, yeah. So it's like there's just like these things that have been lost, these understandings. And it's connected and, with um, these ley lines are connected with our, the stars, our astrology. Right. So it's like the, we okay, get so the, it's a reflection power. above and below as yeah. above. So below. Right. Yes. There is. Yeah. The reflection the in reflection. the cosmology. Yeah. And yeah. that creates this, yeah. like, a beautiful tor toroidal field probably for planet earth with the ley lines, with the stars and our astrology yeah. um, to just create this amazing, you know, it created an amazing, and I feel like we're, getting back to that we're figuring this out and and we're course correcting or correcting it back to um what it used to be yes yeah. i mean people have always been figuring it out too so yeah. it just information gets lost yeah and then you know there could be another resurgence of information um you know because it's it's always there and then now, you know, part of the technology and having almost too much information is there is all this, yeah. you know, and it, I see, you know, people who have understood this stuff long ago and still things haven't changed. I see them kind of going, you know, crazy with that information because things yeah. haven't changed right. on some levels. You know? And it's really about the inner, the inner journey and what it does for you right you know i mean it is we do hope for the collective to change and then the we have these shifts mm -hmm. um but we also need to you know really remember that it's you know the inner journey that determines our outer experience 100 percent. yeah it really does yeah it is yeah all the yeah <clears throat> And yeah, that's, and that's where that perspective too. And then, yeah. And then we're getting into all that other, you know, clearing and, um, and aligning and resonating at, um, yeah. With on our path. To yes. Create, yeah. To really create what we want. That, that what I did the other day with the cars, I was like, I was just like, wow, we are like it. this kind of, I, I felt like I was like in a video game for a split second. Cause I was like, okay, boom. I want no, that. I mean, it was crazy. There are people who do these deep dives and they're like, we're in a simulation, you know, yeah, this yeah. is all. And there's even like interesting things where people, okay. Cause there's a whole thing around breaking your patterns, like, because we are creatures of habit and we like to do wow. and have our routines and mm -hmm. but really if you're trying to create a new reality for yourself you have to you have to take steps in, out in the world to create a new reality yeah. tunnel you can't be doing the same things and then no. wanting something different and expecting things to change right. so i play with this all the time because i get these you know, these hits of people are like, oh, okay, that is really, okay, so let's do that. So sometimes I'll, I'll have a whole vision because a lot of how you manifest is not prayers, outsourcing prayers to other th beings and stuff. Yeah. It's actually your vision, a vision of yourself doing something in action as, and go through the whole thing and how you feel and all that. And then 
uh, <clears throat> you know, say, you know, I intend for this to happen. I intend for my life to be like this. Yeah. And then go out and break your patterns, which is like, just do something completely different. Like yeah. in the morning like today, I never do this. I got up, I had some coffee and I walked around the property, oh, you cool. know, with the coffee. Yeah. I never do that. And I went and saw some, some of the trees I love and, you know, I don't, I, I don't usually do that. So it's like, I break, I do like a series of breaking patterns yeah, and it's cool. amazing what happens. It's amazing. Like it's so simple and yeah. it's like, it totally with the intention of a new vision. And then of course you can't obsess on the vision either. You have to like really let it go, but then take steps to break your patterns and take steps toward that vision. Like go start looking. If you want a new house, go start looking with, at things you, you want to buy for it or, oh. you know, like different things where you're like already moving towards that thing. And it's the confidence you have. It's your will and intent, mm -hmm. which gets into, you yes. know, some of these ancient understandings of this reality, like the Castaneda and his experience with the Naguals mm -hmm. of Mexico. It's like, they were like, it's your will and intent. Everything is your will and intent. Right. So it's like, you know, really understanding that we are creating our reality in every moment. And, and choice. Then taking will and for that. And choice. Cause we literally have the choice to break free yes. from loops with our will and our intent and then the choice like we have to that's my it's like choose it even just on the small like choosing to eat healthy food to, like we have choice you know to figure that out and um and choose you know what is right for us but yeah the will intent and then aligning with that frequency <clears throat> bring it yeah. in knowing it to be true as well yeah that's like your it. confidence yeah you're, yep and what it's is all so, about confidence. say more about the Castaneda Castaneda? Well, it was, you know, he really was focused on um also I want to say about Castaneda, they create there is a vibe around Castaneda mm -hmm. that is really interesting. It's like if you mention it to someone who's like, you know, grew up maybe a little bit older than us, like the 60s mid 60s 70s huh. they're like oh yeah there's all this question whether he even existed or that even he had this experience there's a there's a vibe around it that he that castaneda created this fictional material mm. and like created the whole experience because he has a whole shamanic experience with this these different naguals from mexico okay and they're really powerful yeah. what happens to him and he learns about his sense of self-importance and how it's ruining like everything for him wow you know that it's like oh well i'm this blah, 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 and i'm gonna da, da, da. and it's like the naguals are always constantly like oh, you're a joke you know it's like <laughs> what do you you know yeah and it's always showing him and they show also that there's all these different energies around Wow. You know, that there's, they're constantly dealing with different energies and they go wow. off into the desert and they have all these experiences and, you know, he has this whole experience with Mescal, Mescal the, um, the, um, peyote, oh, yeah. he has those experiences too. You know, it's like, there's a lot of experiences and understanding this reality and all how layered it is and how there's all these different tricksters and, yeah. you know, and it, in the really the surmising of it is it's like your will and intent is like everything in this reality yeah. so and then we're creating this reality so it's just like you know it's we are it, it's done through the story it's actually brilliant because the books are alchemical if you even listen to them they're actually free on youtube okay, you can listen cool. to a bunch of them. and they're you think you're getting a lot of repetitive stuff, but actually you realize, oh yeah, that actually did shift the way I was thinking because there's a lot of back and forth with the Naguals, all the different Naguals all the time that wow. Castaneda is having, wow. you know, his resistance to the teachings and, go, you know, yeah. understanding, you know, what this ancient wisdom. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, book can be about, a lot. So. It can be a lot to like try to uh, grasp the concept oh, of yeah. the quantum space we're in, and things right. are right. And if you're an academic, you know he was an academic, so he was very much into uh, anthropology and like you know mm -hmm. he was indoctrinated in the you know system of the college system and you know so it's like it's again you've got to break free from the persuasive history yeah you know to even expand your mind so it was this whole process of unlearning and expanding so he could actually perceive and see how these energies are working in yeah. our reality and how we can work with them yeah. and um yeah so there was there's a lot that um that is happening in those books. Mm, that's really cool. That really, yeah, helped to expand our perception. Okay. So, I'll have to check yeah. That. Yeah. Castle yeah. Nita. But there's this vibe around it where it's like, no, he made that up. And, you know, oh, if you, if you go through these books, you'd be like, there's no way. And, yeah. and it's, it's a way to kind of discount the authority mm. of these ancient, you know, Nagual's he was working with, mm. these people that were very close to the earth and really understood sorcery wow. and um and magic. Yeah. Well, so, and just understand yeah. what this, yeah, what the what Earth's planet, you know, so, what Gaia is all about and how probably to work with the consciousness like we've been talking about, you know, tapping. Yeah. In. So it's just you have to understand that there's a vibe all it has to do is a vibe needs to be created around something yeah. for us to, whether we'll explore it or not. So that yeah. vibe is to kind of go, Oh yeah, well it's just silly little yeah. made up stories. Yeah. Right. Well, so, that, and that happens a lot. Yeah. Well, and that's where we're getting into the collective because our collective consciousness is creating also, and that's where that persuasion comes in. So these, you know, dark ones or whatever we want to call that came in and were able to control us on a mass we've been collectively creating this like really negative um timeline you know this negative like reality um where we've been lied to so I, that just came to me is like uh we are creating on a collective that's why it is so important to expand your mind expand your consciousness figure stuff out do the inner work um so we can break free really from um this like in a box reality yeah that, we're creating see, that's it. where it gets we're into creating it like, through this persuasion that we've been lied to so as a collateral like, oh right oh is that what's going on and then we and then we turn it into a belief and then we're actually creating it and so yeah. we want to we stop perpetuate it we perpetuate we it. perpetuate. Right. Yeah, we do. It's another P word. Yeah, perpetuate. <laughs> perception, perception. Perpetuate. Perpetuate perspective. It is perception. <laughs> yeah. No, it's perpetuate. But I like the will and intent. Really. No, it's everything, girl. It's everything. everything. Yeah. It is. If you get clear with your will and intent. Yeah. You know, around everything. And you state it out loud. Because everything you have needs to be spoken out loud. You can't yeah. just say things in your mind. Yeah. You have to speak it out loud to because because words are power. Words right. have power. Exactly. So it's like when things are spoken, it's like a spell cast. Yeah. So you have yeah. to like, and this goes for all things that you say. <laughs> right. So yeah, the yeah. spelling because we've been all we've been manipulated with all our words too so i've gone down those rabbit right? and the words life. mean totally different things so yeah they, you know, originally but then they also intended. mean something completely different that they stem from the latin language which that you know when i went down those rabbit holes like you know i'm not, not oh the etymology of words yeah, but, are amazing I mean, look at well, okay another how we would planet trip, you know planet yeah. is plain net yeah. plain and net plain net you know yeah net the net we live in the webbing of energy yeah in egypt they call it the nature spirits are called netaru because yeah. they are masters of the net 
your nature spirits that have mastered this reality. Really cool. So that is why they call them netters or netteru. Oh. So it's like, yeah, the webbing, the net. Yeah. So it's even, it's in our language. It's oh, like, yeah. So yeah, the etymology is, is amazing. They have, it has a lot of, when you start going down those rabbit holes. Yeah. <laughs> what words mean? It's like, wow. Fascinating. Yeah. There's yeah. And so much. there's a lot I've heard, you know, with these, some of these, you know, dark rituals they do, they want you to it, say you will do something. Oh, you can't yeah. just say yes. Oh. You have to use the will because, you know, and this is something I picked up from a, you know, one of those survivors of those uh, terrible satanic oh. rituals, oh. you know. Yeah, she was like, they wanted us to say, you had to say, I will. Wow. Because that is so different than just saying yes. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's just I can't yeah. even imagine that um that reality. Yeah. It's just wild. Um yeah, it is wild. whole nother, yeah. <laughs> whole nother show. I mean there are, yeah, there's so so many realities happening yeah. all at once. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really. Well, and that's So, I mean, yeah. we're just speaking from our perspective, you know, right. there's everybody's got other things going well, and that's on that's what i history. feel is like we all are on our own timeline and we have a choice exactly. again we have that choice to participate in one of those timelines you know or realities so we have to be super diligent on yeah you know, like our will our intent our choice and 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 have and know our boundaries and not get sucked into other you know realities or other exactly someone else's story um so there's that too um yeah yeah but with the same like i don't like i still don't quite understand because it's like um you can't say i can't say someone chose to be a part of those dark rituals you know it's um i mean you like there's that well that, perception of um well our souls did choose and they wanted to choose at such a dark level and i'm like i don't know i don't know about that um you know yeah it's it's a challenge to 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 think about you know having those experiences and being you know did you choose uh, it did you choose it to transform it i mean everybody who goes well, through the dark next side of the soul day. right to whatever degree it is, yeah. it is to know the dark to to really understand how incredible the light is. That's, yeah. So this is a dualistic reality. So everything is polarized. Everything is dualistic. So you know, if 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 we didn't have the duality, we wouldn't have the um, light, the understanding of the light and dark. So yeah. everyone's shamanic journey, dark yeah. night of the soul whatever degree of darkness it goes to, you know, yeah. so they can appreciate the light yeah. when they transform out say, of it. So maybe souls did choose to be born into those, that type of family to bring the light to that timeline and transmute. Yeah. It and, and well, and a lot of times these souls are coming from bloodlines that mm -hmm. have been doing this over and over oh. so they're transforming it for their lineage as well because this is the thing about energetic work you oh. know when you start working with the past you're going to transform everything for your lineage forward and back yeah so that's why that affects you know so the experiences you're having you know and how they relate to your lineage you know you think oh god i'm the one who has to do all this work for the family but it transforms everybody forward and back. Forward and so, back. yeah. Anyways. <laughs> no. Yeah. All the way around us. Yes. No, it's, uh, yeah. I feel that, I feel that to be true. Yeah. Meet with that, you know, and ultimately it's, yeah, figuring out how to, uh, just really 
accept and, and be in our heart space with like just unconditional love in that neutral zero point place is I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And figure out what your destiny and purpose is, you know, it's like, really, we all have a destiny and purpose here. And get excited you know. about it. That's, you know, as hard as, a, you know, as challenging and, and, um, and we've all had our like traumas, but figure it out and clear it. So in this now moment, we can have, you know, make the best of it and be, and just have fun. That's what I say. <laughs> Let's uh, so like a true Aquarius. So true. <laughs> Let's party. <laughs> Let's get this. <laughs> Let's get this party going. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and then in, 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 in another split second, I'll be crying because that'll be my Scorpio moon. <laughs> <laughs> no we're not yes, yes. Have fun and, yes. and you're you have to feel it <laughs> so, yeah yeah but don't you feel like knowing that about yourself is like you know because it's really knowledge of self it is. you know that about yourself so you yeah. can be like oh compassionate and be like you know yeah. why am i feeling that? you know why you i mean it, some people's charts are so contradictive why and hard you? My, I have Leo. Mine too. I have, have a very have difficult a chart. Moon, Aquarius, a Virgo. Like it's so. Yeah, I, I've lots of inner conflict going on all the time with my different signs. <laughs> yeah, so. and so the whole thing with astrology is really, you know, getting these understanding the consciousness around why you have all this going on, and then you can work with it. Yeah. So that's why you know you really the exploration of the self and your your energies yeah you know and this this is how you also understand you know the elements is like how your astrology really relates to the elements too because yeah. these are energies aquarius is you know the uh air sign and then you got the earth Virgo and the earth and then the Scorpio Scorpio is the water you know and then the, how to balance all these different elements you know yeah. within your chart yeah within your life because it is you a know? Right. And Scorpio you have to the whole water sign thing is you have to be able to feel your feelings yeah if you're not if you're not like oh just your Virgo is like just buck up and do it just, <laughs> you know you can talk and your Aquarius too can be both emotionally detached so totally. maybe you would just be emotionally detached if you didn't have that Scorpio mood <laughs> seriously <laughs> yeah no I would be totally yeah because that's yeah so the Scorpio uh gets keeps me balanced with yeah the connection yeah with emotions. yeah so it's good yeah and it is like so it's, yeah it's like connecting all these different resources we have to oh. to like uh come into wholeness yeah you know, within ourselves. yeah is really where it's at well, it's, it's really cool because i you know i do readings with my friend and she does the astrology part like we do co-readings and then i do the the psychic you know energy reading and it really lines up so it's like i'm like oh it, that's why astrology really is important get to know your signs and and that's like your blueprint for um you know your life and it gives you it just is their clues like every like the magic in this it, what we experience those two they're they're clues they're messages from either our self or higher self or guides or ancestors they're clues to figure out you know figure it out <laughs> yeah yeah i know they're big clues and astrology I, is a big big clue and because it's it big, is it is for us definitely. to navigate with yeah and the ancients are and ancient also astrology the stars where they are and you know where they were when well you were and the controllers them. use astrology now those who are you know oh. so-called you know every event was created in an astrological specific timeline and then we're getting the yeah, yeah. Then, that's a whole other thing magnify the effects well they so changed it to... on us too they took away a month right we're, now we're finding that there's 13 oh, months. well the they timelines are us with these timelines and um the calendar and time yeah they really the daylight savings on us. Day, ugh. Don't even, yeah it's just no, that's ridiculous it's all messy 
That's we all know it's ridiculous. Sometimes. So why are we allowing it to still continue? That's my question. But that's the thing. That's the thing, though, with this reality. Here there, in California. It's just... like, yeah, who's controlling that? We all don't want daylight savings. And who keeps... Yeah, nobody them? wants it. But it's yet it still goes on. So you got to ask yourself, well, what's what's really going on then there? Mm -hmm. You know? Because it's not because people didn't, you know, vote to... Because it's... People did. They voted to like change it, but they're like, oh, we can't figure out what to do. I mean, that's just. Oh, that's funny. No, it's ridiculous. And they so that's to... when you got to just go, oh, well, that's this, you know, this, just this weird reality that we just Simulation have to deal break. with. <laughs> Simulation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, or some people call it stalled century. You know, it's just like, oh, you know, it's just like ever changes so yeah it's just an interesting and you know just awesome. tune out of it yeah well that's it <laughs> the the your yeah. will intent so really get clear um you know this is we'll wrap it up with our hot talks and and end it with like yeah hot just talks. get really clear with your will your intent what do you want to create and really align with it Really, uh, yeah. to your inner power. Be confident. Be confident. Be confident. Because you're an amazing, your infinite effect. soul that I say came from, <laughs> you know, the uh, a source energy, God's source, whatever you want to call it. That is real to me. You know, I feel this connection with something that's just, that is on our side, that wants us to do good here, that wants us to flourish and um, be abundant. And we just, it's like, we're on like the hero's journey. We're on like a quest, you know, here. And it's like, uh, the, uh, source wants us to do good on our quest. So yeah, be confident in that. And, and all that good <laughs> stuff, will intent manifest, uh, you can do it. And so, and if you need <laughs> help, call Caitlin, you know, she can do your astrology. <laughs> if you want some guidance um, or get a hold of me for a uh, psychic, you know, Akashic Records reading and um, get clear on, you know, what your next steps are. So yeah. enjoyed our hot Raising talks. The vibration. Yeah. Hot talks. Hot I did have a hot flash in the beginning. Of our did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, I love, I, I want hot flashes. It's like, oh, you know, I don't. I no, don't. I don't. no, I do. Cause I like being hot. I take the hot oh, flashes God. over my brain fog. We're, and we're talking about menopause. If you, if you, if you've made it this far with us, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so now we're talking about menopause, which we usually bring into a little bit into our, uh, cause we are, you know, I'm 51 and you're 54 and we're both going through menopause. And so we do like to talk about that. And <laughs> it's an exciting time. It to is a part of it. Listen to our other videos because uh, we talk in detail about menopause in the apocalypse. But um, yeah, fun stuff. In so, this great time of change. Thank you for joining us and um, please like or subscribe um, to our channel. If you've come across us and you resonated with what we talk about um so thank you and caitlin any last words yes. no i think i've said it all i said it all okay awesome well great <laughs> convo and we'll we'll see you next time yeah bye <laughs>